Right, we're back at the studio here at Nuki Golf Club and we're going to do a little iron fitting for you. We've got the new Maverick irons and we've brought Neil in who's going to do a little fitting with us with Chris and see if we can improve anything than what he's currently got in his golf bag. Neil, welcome to the studio. Welcome Hi, to the channel. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, good. Can you, you work a little bit with John? Don't you? I do, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a bit on his channel, channel yeah. yeah. Talk to me about your golf. What handicap have you got? Uh, 15. So if you were looking to change your irons, what would you look to try and move towards? I like a traditional looking head really, hence okay. the blades. So it's just something that's going to give me that more consistency. Would you like any more distance? Um, I think distance wise I'm alright. It's happy with your distance? Yeah, um, but then who wouldn't like more distance with a club? Let's get you hitting some shots, let's get some numbers from you. What have we got there? We have got a Slazenger XT20 Pure Blade. Pure. There's... I've never seen this before. I did have a shave last night because I knew I was on camera today, but I could have kept it and just used, used this, I think. Blade primarily used to lower launch, lower spin. Workability should be able to move it left to right, right to left. Would it be something that I would advise? Probably not. Shaft has it got? Wow. Uh, okay, where do we start? So he has a rifle, 6.5. believe in this model, a 6.5 is just a stiff in the new Project X's. Uh, that would actually be 6.0. It's quite a heavy shaft. A lot of technology really is missing out of a golf club like this. You're not helping yourself with the game. It'd be interesting to see how Neil gets on with the uh, Mavericks. Right, Chris, what are we going to have a little play with today? So. Neil? With Neil, uh, obviously we talked about Neil's current set of being set of blades, heavy shafts. So we're looking at the new Maverick from Callaway. They produced three heads overhaul, overall, but basically the ones we have currently, we have the standard head yeah. and we have the Max head. I do like this sort of colour scheme. The Max is a lot bigger, as yeah. you can see. It's a major game improvement, Iron. This the here Max. is, uh, as I described to someone I fitted last week, this is like having a cannon in the bag. Uh, this thing just... Is, is an absolute beast. If you're some guy who's who's perhaps getting on in age or some guy who just wants to hit it further, that's where you should be looking. Normal, yeah. or the standard head, sorry, is a bit more traditional, a little, little bit thinner on the bottom. Yeah. Top edge is still quite thick. I think not everyone would be there, sort of cup of tea, yeah. but I think the way it performs and testing I've done with it so far, um, they are... They are a bit of kit, I've got to say. Now, what's interesting, we've just looked at the specs, haven't we? Yeah. We so have. we've got 27 degrees of loft in the Maverick standard one, and we've got 30 degrees of loft in the Max. So, and this is the seven irons that, that, that Chris has from his, uh, for his demo kits or fitting kits. Now, let's not be seduced by the numbers here of what Neil is going to get, because this seven iron in the standard is going to be the equivalent of Neil's five iron okay so that's going to be interesting if you look at the max head that's going to be closer maybe towards his six iron so we're going to see what numbers he gets from this i'm expecting to see higher launch lower spin than what his current clubs are getting him it's whether he can then manage that from there so the standard numbers are in. So what have we got, Chris? Can I just say before we go any further, despite the big nose, this isn't lying. This is it's quite it amazing, is these numbers. So we look at club head speed. We've got him another six miles an hour club head speed. We've got him another eight and a bit miles an hour ball speed. So big, big, massive shift in the right direction. We're launching it slightly higher. So we're launching it just over a degree higher, which for Neil, he said he wasn't overly keen on doing, obviously playing down, at, uh, down on a Lynx golf course. So we're hitting a seven iron. So that's Neil's own. This is the uh, this is the Maverick standard. He's spinning his current ones at seven two, but the one we're looking at here is his one with the Maverick. Here he's now only spinning it four. Now four is not a lot. It's quite strong. His peak height with the Maverick is quite high. It's uh, it's considerably higher than than his own. His own twenty one Maverick twenty seven. When we talk about spin, we're talking about total spin there. Yeah. In his backspin, he's at six six with his own compared to four one. Yeah. He's spinning it about a third less. Okay. Which is off the charts, really. Which is slightly concerning, but we'll <laughs> come to that in a minute. I just want him now to hit the max and yeah. just see where he is with the max and then just compare those numbers as well. Perfect. 
standard head. How did it look? Let's just get a look at a it feel. It looks though. like the old Callaways, you know, the old like X12s, X14s. Yeah, you, said that, didn't you? X12s, yeah, you sort of put it down by the voice. Yeah, that's old Callaway. I mean, it's a little bit larger than what I'm used to, but yeah. but no, it, it did look nice behind the ball. Fair feel. Didn't really feel a lot through the head. It okay. could have been a toe hit, could have been a heel hit, but not it wasn't getting horrible. getting as much feedback as what you would get. Yeah, that yeah not, not the feedback. But and, and, and you like that? Is that a bother? Does that bother you? It's nice to know where you hit it. Yeah. You know, so you know for your swing if you're hitting it slightly out of the toe, slightly out of the heel, slightly high on the face, low on the face. But with the, the Callaways, it did feel a little bit, not dead, but, you know, there wasn't as much feel there. hearing a great deal of difference in the two heads what are you are you sensing anything there no nothing really at all i'm i'm guessing when neil comes to it i guess the feel might be slightly different bigger head different work um weight distribution but the sound is is, is almost I identical it does sound it sounds quick off the face it sounds like it's coming off pretty decent in all fairness right we have now whacked the max we have maxed him out <laughs> so talk to me what's he getting out of this i mean we're chuckling here because it's quite extreme isn't it these numbers are extraordinary and uh 15 handicapper um you know i think putting him in a set of clubs which are maybe a little bit more easy to use than his blades a bit more forgiveness a um, lot less feedback than he's obviously used to but if we look at the numbers club head speed and ball speed we're not looking too too dissimilar we're only 0.3 away club and we're only 0.4 away ball so big key areas here for the max are it's launching a hell of a lot higher it's almost it's almost three and a half degrees higher now with a seven iron that's quite a big jump um spins are still down a lot compared to his own but have a look we've got another virtually virtually 1500 spins between uh even the standard and the max so the max spins a lot more than the standard but compare that to his own and it's it's still a quite quite a big drop so it's peaking at hell of a lot higher now we're now peaking it at 34 which means it's coming down on a sharper angle of descent yeah. there so and he's lost seven yards over the standard yeah He's lost seven because I think might primarily because of the spin and the launch. So it's launching a bit too high and it's spinning a little too much. And the reality is max is 30 degrees 30. in loft with yep. the seven iron. And the standard, amazingly, mm. is 27 degrees. Yeah. So we should see the max launch a bit higher. Yep. We should see it spin a fraction. Yeah. So in turn, we should see it lose a few yards, which yep. is exactly what it's doing. The max is higher. It's spinning. It's not going quite as far for his particular swing. Um, and the standard is said a little lower, little less, little less backspin coming down at a slightly flatter angle. But to fly at 180, and you know, you, you you've got to be looking at 185 with a seven iron. That's that's a big gap. How did that seven iron in the max feel compared to let's say the standard? Standard less feel off the face. Okay, with the, with the max. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had to look at it to see where it was being hit on right, the okay. face. But so you're not um, getting a great deal of feedback. Are you? No, no, not a great deal of feedback. But you just feel you can hit it. And Does it look bigger? Looks a lot bigger, thicker on the top line. Okay. You put it down, you think, yeah, I can hit this. Yeah, hit this a mile. It gives you some confidence. That's it, it's it? the confidence in there, yeah. Yeah, okay. And are you noticing any difference in feel off the face or sound off the face? Sound off the face, not really any difference. Okay. Not really any difference between the two. Feel wise, I say just a little bit less feel. Yeah. But you would expect that from a little bit more of a forgiving head, so you, you could hit it anywhere on the face, so to speak, and still get the results from it. So I'm not happy with this experiment because this is not a seven iron, okay? It might say that it's a seven iron on the bottom of the club, but in reality, we're comparing this to, I don't know, we, could, we need to compare it to his five iron in his set to get a reality, because I think his five iron's gonna be around 26 degrees in his set, so if you think his seven iron's 34, his six iron's gonna be around 30, and then his five iron's gonna be around sort of 26, 27 degrees. So, Neil, I'm gonna get you to hit yeah, your five iron right. because I think that's more, like what we're going to see from the numbers. Five iron, five iron, but that one says seven iron. And then the length difference, obviously what we're expecting to see. Yes. So we've got him to hit the five iron. Yes. There's a lot of five iron testing going on here, isn't there? A lot, a lot. Probably more than we'd normally do on a, on a, on a fitness session on a Monday morning. But if you just grab those clubs, this is his bladed five iron compared to what we've just been testing in the Maverick. So this is similar in loft now. Difference in length? So the length is probably as we'd expect to see. Um, there's only about a quarter of an inch there, really. So you're probably looking at uh, this seven iron would be probably the same length as Neil's current six iron. Yeah. But obviously this is a seven. You can just see the difference in head. There's 
there's quite a lot of R&D, a lot of technology gone into the, to, to this, weight distribution, um, MOIs, etc, etc. They're not a heap, just a very nice looking golf club. Um, this one kind of would help bring your handicap down. This one looks great in the bag when you're sat down having a beer. Should we have a little look at the numbers of what these two, um, or what they all give us? Yeah, because they're quite remarkable. So what we've got here is, uh, with, this was with the standard Maverick, this is with the Max, and this is with Neil's own 5-iron. So as Dan said, we're looking at uh, doing a like-for-like -like, um, comparison. So when we looked at the Max, which was coming in at 30 degrees, club head speed, 84 miles an hour, ball speed, albeit 122. With his own, we've got 70, so we're albeit 14 yards, uh, 14 miles an hour less. Yeah. Speed here, we're 20 miles an hour less on ball speed. So just tell me, why do you think his, his swing speed is going to be down? Even though the shaft is longer, yep. you'd expect that to go up. But I, I mean, I'm feeling like because he's got so much weight on that, 100%. that rifle shaft yeah. that he's just struggling to... Control yeah, I think I, I think for me it's a little bit too stiff. Obviously, the stiffer something is, the less bend you're going to have in it. it. That's going to create a lot more speed. So for me, with with his own irons here, I I, I believe the shaft is a bit too heavy. Yeah, certainly too stiff. Hundred percent too stiff. Looking at his numbers, yeah. it's way way too stiff. But we are doing a like for like, and it's you're looking at almost 50 yards difference in carry and um, albeit 40 yards difference o overall. So in the standard head. He's hitting his, he's hitting the standard head 180 on an average yep. carry. In the max head, he's hitting it 173. Yeah. And in his own five iron, he's hitting it 125 on an average. On okay. an average. Uh, but his there best are... one there is at 161. To be fair. So even even if we look at Neil's best best shot here. Swing speed 76, ball speed 110. Well, that's as good as we've got the numbers there. And spinning about 37. So it's not spinning a lot, but. 160 carry, 180 overall. That's his absolute best. What he's got in the locker, yeah. compared to averages, uh, it it just goes to prove that maybe maybe he needs to look at maybe sacrificing a little bit of feedback, a little bit of looks, yeah. to maybe get his game uh, into a better shape and get that handicap tumbling. Right, Neil, what are you thinking after you've just been through that process? That's Again, this is more testing, but ultimately, how are you yeah. feeling now? You've tested it's eye opening. Him? Definitely eye-opening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sort of seeing the difference in the loft and the number on the bottom of the club, it does, yeah, it's quite a minefield really when you start getting into it. So would you now consider moving out of a blade and into something that's maybe a little bit more helpful? L looking at the numbers, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So you are certainly more consistent with that maverick than you were, let's say, your five iron. Yeah. Yeah, it's just getting that dispersion down, which is obviously the key. You're hitting into a green. You want to hit the green rather than be 20 yards left, 20 yards right. Yeah. It's getting that consistency and the, yeah, the dispersion close. So I love these types of videos because, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to make sure that we understand what these clubs are. Callaway have launched what I feel a very good product, but at the end of the day, you need to understand what type of product you're testing. It's all great to see a seven iron written on the bottom and you hitting it 180 yards carry in the air like we were seeing what Neil was getting, but you've got to compare it to what the club in your bag is going to compare to. So that's why I really wanted Neil to test it against the five iron because the lofts are basically the same. If you look at what Callaway offer, they offer you a sand wedge, they offer you a gap wedge, an A wedge, and then a pitching wedge. Now think about that, in a normal set you're going to get a sand wedge, a pitching wedge, a nine iron upwards. They're basically just tricking you with the numbers written on the bottom. And there's nothing wrong with going into a game improvement iron as long as you understand what that club is doing for you and how it's going to benefit you. Do not be seduced by the number written on the bottom. Understand your numbers, which will help you become a better golfer. Let me know what you think. Put your comments down there. Have you been out and tested something like the Maverick or something similar where you've got big differences in numbers? And have you bought off the back of that because you want to tell your mates that you're hitting a 7 iron 20 yards past them? I want to hear what you have to say. Remember, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like what you're seeing from these videos, give us a thumbs up. And if you want a few more videos, hit that bell and we'll send you through some notifications. We look forward to catching up with you again soon.